Let's use linear combinations of the Pauli matrices to construct matrix representations of operators that act on states in a two-dimensional Hilbert space. All of the matrix representations in this video will be done in the eigenbasis of the Pauli Z operator. This is a very convenient basis to work with. It is an orthonormal basis. That means that the two basis vectors are both, both normalized and mutually orthogonal. I'm going to use the same notation that I used in the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist. I'm going to use the labels 0 and 1 to describe these two basis vectors. Only two basis vectors are required to span the entire two-dimensional Hilbert space. So if we take the inner product of the vector labeled by 0 with itself, that is equal to 1. And we have the exact same relationship for the inner product of the vector labeled by 1 with itself. So 0 and 1 are just labels. This is an important thing to remember. We can put any labels we want on these kets and bras. This 0 over here does not denote the 0 vector. So let's make that a very important point, that this is not the additive identity when we're writing down the vector space axioms. This is a normalized vector. The norm of this vector is 1. So this is not the 0 vector. This condition over here is the normalization condition. Both of these vectors are normalized. And they're also mutually orthogonal. So if we take the inner product of 0 with 1, that gives 0. And this is exactly the same as the inner product of 1 with 0. If we swap the order, we're effectively taking the complex conjugate. So this is notation for the inner product in Dirac notation. And the inner product has a bra followed by a ket. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use ket bra notation. And ket bra notation is notation for the outer product. And that's not going to give us a number. It's not going to give us a complex number. It's going to give us a matrix. And specifically, a 2 by 2 matrix. So let's write down a ket bra combination. So first, let's take the 0, 0 combination. We have 0 as a ket, followed by 0 as a bra. In the matrix representation, this is going to look like 1, 0 as a column vector. And then we're going to need to take the Hermitian adjoint. And the Hermitian adjoint is the same as the transpose in this case, because all of the elements are real. So the complex conjugate is going to have no effect. So we just have to take the transpose and make this into a row vector. And this is what we get. We have a column vector and then a row vector. This is the opposite to what we would have in the case of an inner product. That is why this is called an outer product. So we can use matrix multiplication, and the result is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. And that 2 by 2 matrix is only going to have a 1 in the top left position. Everything else is going to be zeros. So if you multiply these guys out, 1 times 1 will only occur with this combination over here. This is the 0, 0 uh, location in this matrix. So 0, 0 is in the top left. All of these other combinations when we're multiplying have at least one 0. And in this bottom right uh, combination over here, we have 0 times 0. So we're guaranteed to get 0. We can express this as a linear combination of the identity matrix and the Pauli Z matrix. So I'll do that over here. We can write this as 1 half of the identity matrix, which just has 1s on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. And we can add to that the Pauli Z matrix, which is 1 minus 1 on the diagonal. So you can see that this 1 and this minus 1 cancel each other out, and they give 0. This 1 and this 1 add together to give 2, but then we have to divide by 2, and that gives us this 1. So this matrix is written as a linear combination of these two matrices. And we can write this in condensed notation. This is 1 half of sigma 0 plus sigma 
3. I introduced this notation for the Pauli matrices and the identity matrix in the previous video. So we're not just including uh, the three Pauli matrices, Pauli X, Y, and Z, we're also including the two by two identity matrix. That's this one over here. Now, instead of the zero zero combination, let's have a look at the one one combination. That's going to correspond to this bottom right entry in this two by two matrix. So I'll write this ket bra combination. First we have the ket, then we have the bra. Now this is going to look like, like this. We're going to have 0, 1 in the column vector. And then in the row vector, we're also going to have 0, 1. When we use standard matrix multiplication to evaluate this, we're going to get a 2 by 2 matrix. And that 2 by 2 matrix is going to have zeros everywhere except the bottom right corner. So that's the 1, 1 position. The 0, 0 position and the 1, 1 position sit on the diagonal. So this can be written as a linear combination. You have one half of the identity, ones on the diagonal, zeros on the off diagonal, minus the Pauli Z matrix. So we have one minus one. And let me close the bracket and we'll see why this works. If we take this top left entry over here, one minus one, those two guys cancel. We get zero. And down here we have one minus minus one, which is going to give one plus one, that's two. We divide by two, that gives us plus one. So this is very similar to what we had up here. And let's write it in the condensed sigma notation as well. So we're going to have one half of sigma zero minus sigma three. So the only difference over here is a minus sign, whereas we have a plus sign up here. All of the matrices are diagonal matrices here. So all of the non-zero elements are on the diagonal. Off-diagonal elements are always zero for these two cases. Now let's look at cases where we're on the off-diagonal. We don't have any diagonal uh, contributions. So there's just going to be zeros on the diagonal. Let's look at the, con the, uh, the combination 0, 1. Let's look at that combination first. So we'll have the ket. 0 and the bra 1. So the column vector is going to have entries 1, 0. But the row vector is going to be different. It's going to have entries 0, 1. And if we use standard matrix multiplication, that's going to give us the following matrix. We're going to have zeros everywhere except the top right. So the top right is going to be 1. So we take this one multiplied by this one, that's going to give us this. Everything else is zero. Now we can write this as a linear combination of, we're going to have one half again, a linear combination of the Pauli X matrix. So that's ones on the off diagonal and zeros on the diagonal. You can see it's a swapped over version of the identity matrix. And then we want to add to that I, the imaginary unit I, times Pauli y. And Pauli y has an i down here and a minus i in the top right. So this is the convention that I used in the previous video. And this is a, a very widely used convention. You can also define the, pi, the Pauli y operator to have a minus sign down here and a plus sign up here. That is another equivalent uh, convention that you can use. And it is just a sign change for that convention. But we're using this more commonly used sign convention. I'll close this bracket, and I can also write this in the condensed notation that we have over here. So we have sigma 1 plus i times sigma 2. So sigma 1, 2, 3 is the same as sigma x, y, z. And sigma 0 is the special identity matrix. So let's see why this works. If we, uh, the, the diagonal elements are just zeros, so we're going to get 0 over here. The off diagonal elements, let's look at the top right element. Here we have i times minus i. Those are multiplicative inverses, so that's going to give the multiplicative identity 1. Then we're going to have 1 plus 1, and then we divide that by 2, that gives us 1 over here. In the bottom left, we're going to have 1 plus i times i. i times i, that's i squared, that is minus 1. 
So minus 1 will cancel this 1 and we'll get 0. That's exactly what we want. Now, let's have a look at the swapped over version of this, or the Hermitian adjoint. Let's put the 1 in the cat and the 0 in the bra. We'll do that over here. So we're going to have 1 in the cat and 0 in the bra. The column vector is going to have entries 0, 1. And the row vector is going to have entries 1, 0. So the resulting matrix is going to look like this. We're going to have this resulting matrix. We're going to have a 1 in the bottom left and zeros everywhere else. So we can call this bottom left position the 1, 0 position. And we can call this matrix, uh, this, uh, matrix element up here the 0, 1 position. It's in the zeroth row and the oneth, or the first, uh, column over here. And this position is just the opposite. We have one zero. So when the two labels are exactly the same, you're sitting on the diagonal. And when the labels are different, you're sitting on the off diagonal. So we have zero one, that's this top right, and one zero is the bottom left position. And you can see that from matrix multiplication, you will only get a, a non-zero contribution from multiplying this with this. So that is, you have to be in the bottom row and in the left column. Now, let's uh, do an analogous linear combination over here. That's going to give us one half of, first we need the Pauli x matrix, exactly what we have up here. But now we're going to have a minus i times this Pauli y matrix. And that is this matrix over here. And I'll close the bracket, and if we write this in the condensed notation, we have one half times sigma one minus i times sigma two. So this is very useful. Let's see why this works. In the bottom left entry, we have minus i times i. That's going to give plus one. So we have one plus one, and we divide that by two. Then we get 1 over here. And in this top right entry, we have 1 minus 1, because it's minus i times minus i. That gives us a minus 1, so this cancels. And we get 0 in the top right entry. Another way of thinking of it is you have i times i, which is i squared. That's minus 1. And then you have two minus signs. So the two minus signs cancel, but then you have an additional minus sign, which leaves you with 1 minus sign. So that's minus 1. Now, this is what we have in this video. We have linear combinations of the Pauli matrices, and we're also including the identity matrix. We're going to be using uh, these relationships later in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find those other videos if you click over here.